there does seem to be a crisis for, for boys today. It does seem like the problem is either not getting fixed or maybe, maybe even getting worse. How do you see this problem? I want to hear a little bit more about what you've observed. Yeah. I, you know, there's a real problem. Um, in many ways, manhood is under attack. Definition of, of what is a man is all over the place. And most of the defin almost all the definitions are silly. Yeah. I mean, he's 16 or he's 18 or he got a driver's license. That doesn't make it a man. Yeah. Um, there are 30 year olds that are still boys. There are 50 year olds that are still boys. And there are some 15 year olds that are men because it's an internal character thing. And so, yeah, there's a, there's a problem because also dads don't know, um, where to go sometimes and they don't know how to get their boys attention. You know, attention is divided between games or, uh, other attractions, busyness is a problem. So there's a lot of things fighting against yeah. it. And this is important because so much hinges on our boys. Yes. Tomorrow's men de depend on what we do with today's boys. Um, if we do well, we'll have hopefully some good men to lead our daughters to be in charge of the families, church, community, whatever. If we don't, then man, what a disaster is ahead of us. And I think we're in the middle of some failures of the past, but they can be overcome. Somebody has to lead the charge. And, and yet dad still sometimes think, I just wish, I wish I had an uncle here beside me. He would just tell me just, you know, kind of not really hold my hand through it, but you know, just an uncle that I could trust. He could sit down with me and talk and, uh, and guide me through it. And yeah. as they do that though, I'm seeing that the boys are, the boys are more eager than maybe we think they are distracted, but when they see real, when they know they're safe. When they know that, I mean, like they're not going to be embarrassed or, or, or ridiculed or when they feel that they can meet the mark, when they feel like, you know, you can measure up, it's not some unattainable, um, picture of what a man is that the, the kid just said, ah, there's no way I can do all that or be all that. Right. So when that's within reach, I think boys are eager to be invited into a kind of manhood that is strong, that is noble, uh, that is virtuous. A kind of manhood that is welcoming and assuring because it's right, because it is good. And I think boys are, will be attracted, are attracted to that. And I'm seeing that. And yeah. many dads just don't think they have what it takes, but they do if they're just coached through it. So they absolutely, they can do it. Yeah. 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 The coaching, I think is so critical. There's the adage that men won't do anything until they have to, then they can do anything. Um, That's I think, uh, that really helped me understand the essence of the problem as well. It's very much what you're saying that if, if there's not a culture, uh, that is really calling men up, if it's just saying, no, just grab your rights, do whatever feels good to you, men will sink to that level, you know? And if we create a culture that we're calling men up, you're going to see the most amazing things you've ever seen out of men. And so we have to create that culture you can't, and especially starts with your own and within your own family with fathers and their own sons. And there is no substitute for that. Um, there's things we can do to help, you know, mitigate the damage and to surround boys with a community that don't have fathers. But, but, um, God's plan was that boys have fathers and that the fathers will call them to a very high standard. Um, and so it's being attacked on every level, right? You have fatherlessness, which is at epidemic pr pr proportions. Then you have even very engaged fathers that won't call their sons up to a high level because they've been taught that, you know, it's just basically, uh, being a good father, just being present and playing with your child. There's not a mm -hmm. sense of, no, we we're called to greatness and we're going to do great things for the Lord. Um, and so that all requires traditions and culture and identity. Um, these are the powerful tools that, um, every single, um, team on the earth that has any real success um, brings to bear as well as just a really well-trained coach who knows what they're doing and is really trying to instill, um, confidence and, and has a clear direction that he wants to see the team move in. So yeah, there's a lot at stake here. Like you're saying, I, I think we need to, um, be really thoughtful about how to invest and find these tools.